But this is another good video from Bora City. I'm glad we're back watching these Bora City videos because she never disappoints. Ever, actually. Mm. Even when she called me out. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to watch more videos than the thousands of ones that are already on my channel? Hell yeah. How'd I do that? Huh? Tell me. You know, like the ones that I can't show on YouTube? Uh, I, I got you. I have a Patreon with three tiers. This is what you will get per tier. For those of you like to read it. Honestly, I love it. We be going crazy on the Patreon, but I'm going to let you be the judge of that. So y'all go ahead and check out the Patreon and let me know what you think. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting. And thank you for everything. Now, let's get back to the video. Um, since we watched uh, some Bora City, you know what I'm saying? And this one is about uh, the 2025 renewal contract. <laughs> this is the BTS 2025 contract renewal. Didn't come out of nowhere. Y'all ready? Sit in y'all seats. This is a short one compared to the 40 minutes ones that we be doing. So let's watch it. Boris City, we love you on this channel. Okay? So let's go. The CC is turned on. All of the BTS members just signed their third contract to Oof. continue being part of BTS as a seven-member group under their label Big Hit Music, part of Hype Corporation. Of if you don't know, BTS is still a group despite being in the military, and they are currently in their second contract. This third BTS contract starts in 2025. And I'm very happy, but I'm not surprised at all, because the signs were always there. When oh, BTS yeah. announced that they were going to start their mandatory military service and focus on solo music, it was so easy to assume that it was the end. And they understand this coming from people who don't know much about the industry and BTS's contracts. But when it comes from people who actually work on media, it was frustrating to see that there was so much misinformation and nonsense predictions being pushed around by them. I'm not even gonna lie to you. The amount of shit that I have seen was insane. Like, like just like not, like knowing or just just having an idea of what was going to happen, seeing all these people try to just spill all these news was like, bro, this is this is this is hilarious. But y'all y'all are lying. <laughs> y'all niggas are lying. The boys of BTS are headed in different directions. I don't know if I think they're gonna come back. BTS just revealed some major news, and it's not <laughs> like better. Like. Maybe it's time to move on. The K-pop supergroup broke hearts around the world, announcing they're going to take some time to focus on solo projects. Their management says it's not a hiatus, so kind of sounds like it. I mean, I mean, I guess all this is why news media sucks ass. <laughs> All good things must come to an end, right? Billboard even had an article in 2022 titled BTS hiatus didn't come out of nowhere. These were the warning signs. Mm. Allegedly, one of the writers even took out his name from the writing credits. Could it uh. be because he realized that these predictions made no sense or was he afraid that he wouldn't be able to interview BTS once they reunite? <laughs> I don't know. But what I do know is that these kind of predictions are now 100% denied. Not <laughs> only by ARMY and BTS, but also by an official legal document let's see why the bts 2025 contract renewal didn't come uh, out these were the obvious signs the industry tried to dismiss ah uh, that's a fire okay company behind korean supergroup bts is not just a record label or a management company you know what's funny one thing i would think like after this hype thing i wouldn't even think i wouldn't even think bts would come to an end they literally just, they're literally making like hella business moves. Why in the fuck would they end one of the things that made them able to make said business moves? Like, huh? I, I'm, I'm so confused. I want to talk about the importance of this contract, not just about the fact that they are signing with Hype. However, I know that there are people asking themselves why are they signing with Big Hit and Hype for a third time when they obviously have quote-unquote better opportunities with major international labels. Some people even say that it would be better for them to create their own label, like other K-pop idols do. The answer by some armies would be that Big Hit is BTS's yeah, label what the and Hype is BTS's company because they built that company from the yeah, what when the BTS hell? When BTS started, they were the only group sustaining that label. And it's thanks to BTS and BTS only that exactly. the label is where it is now. Exactly. In return, the CEO gifted big stocks to BTS. So even if they leave one day, they will continue making money from other groups signed to the label. But if you- Nigga, what? That is some shit that these Western labels are not doing. Hello? 
Fucking equity? Excuse me? <laughs> if you don't buy this maybe sentimental and dreamy idea, let's talk about the other options BTS reject. Okay. In my opinion, no matter which label the BTS members choose, they're not going to be able to manage them 100% correctly. Exactly. Because no label has had the experience of successfully managing a group this big. If BTS signed with UMG or Universal Music Records, which is the biggest and most powerful music label in Fuck the world, no. the label will continue with some actions that go against BTS's philosophy, like payola, over working and over controlling artists and underpaying musicians this can be good for their numbers but this kind of shady stuff can create allegations and other legal problems and they <clears throat> will definitely not help bts's longevity exactly Think about the western artists who have multiple legal battles with their own labels also megan dropped a really good song megan dropped a really really good song i'm not gonna lie that song is amazing the guitars in that motherfucker oh that shit was a good song i'm not even gonna lie the label <laughs> others even have to re-record their discographies because they don't own their music shit so speaking of that shit we just talking did y'all know taylor swift sold 1.5 million with that re-recorded album She sold 1.5 million. Nigga, what? Like, huh? So what about creating their own? It was uh, 1989. I, I found that out. She still needs to not... Be, I hope she's not at the game tomorrow, because... No. They will like some K-pop idols do. When K-pop idols end their seven-year contract, it's common for them to create their own label and have the freedom well. <laughs> they didn't have under their previous contract with a K-pop label. However, since these artists are promoting in South Korea, the best case scenario for them is finding promotion opportunities for themselves inside South Korea. Mm -hmm. But the kind of promotions that the biggest group in the world requires are more than a new inexperienced label <laughs> can provide. Even if they get the best CEOs in music to work with them, the BTS members would have to go through the struggle of finding and working with experts they don't know Hell and they yeah. don't trust. That's a so bad they chose yeah. hype. The label which made them debut and which knows BTS's style of working and exactly. promotion demands. Beyond this, the BTS members are business majors, and it's been reported that they already have a strong voice in the agency. RM has even made presentations challenging the company's projects and has successfully stopped them. Mm. I believe this is why their contract negotiations always happen years earlier, and they come to a conclusion two years before the start of the new contract. This is not common in K pop. Okay. Groups either announce that they are renewing their contracts a month or two before their previous contract is about to end or they continue negotiating months after their contracts already ended but by looking for a conclusion two years before the next contract is about to start the bts members have time to consult their lawyers talk between each other and tell their demands to the label actually they were not shy with their demands for the second contract which is the one they're currently signed to this is what bts told hype during negotiations for the second contract we will give you seven more years but give us the acknowledgement that we deserve for the success that we have achieved. Okay. We reflect that in the country. Okay. This Damn. negotiation happened in 2018 when their highest peak was number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, when they had no Grammy nominations hmm. and when they spent only two years in the global music industry. Okay, okay, but okay. now the BTS members have eight number one songs, five Grammy nominations. They made billions of dollars not only for their small independent label, Ooh. but also to their country. And they have. That's a lot of zeros. It's a lot of zeros, man. It's a lot of zeros. Solidified a legacy for over a decade. So if they had high demands then, imagine what they were able to agree with this third contract. Actually, this contract required board approval, which means that the terms are above the regular threshold. This oh. is unusual, and it can suggest that this new deal will give the BTS members bigger cuts, shares, exclusive rights, oh, or something shit. extra that the board had to approve. Ooh. Only the down payment is estimated to be over three times what it was with their second contract. This is not the total they are getting for the entirety of the contract. Oh, it's just fuck. a small initial payment. 15.7? Per member? Fuck. Fuck, bro. And of course, you would need to add all the money they would get when they actually come back in 2025. That's so yes, fire. This contract is massive. Woof. Probably the most important of their careers yet. The magnitude of these news were confirmed by RM, who as the leader of BTS shared a snippet of the contract on Instagram, followed by BTS Army 2025. 
and a celebration of the contract renewal, Beckett donated $750,000 to BTS's UNICEF campaign in okay, okay, the name okay. of ARMY. So now that I talked a little about the basics of why they chose to sign with HYVE, I'll talk about what I actually wanted to talk about, which right, is the go. importance of these contracts in it. itself. Because if you really think about it, there has not been any other contract like this in the history of music. Don't think oh. about BTS re-signing with HYBE. Think about what the existence of BTS as a seven-member group for approximately at least another decade means to pop culture. I don't know too much about like K-pop contracts for real for real, but I know like over here, there's like a bunch of like different major ass contracts that be going on in this music industry. And now artists over here, they're, the thing is to like sign like distribution deals and everything like that. Just one thing that y'all should know, well, that y'all probably would know, that Taylor Swift thing, when she sold $1.5 million from that, um, that re-recorded album, there are some labels that are trying to put in new contracts for new artists that say you cannot re-record your own music because of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, bro, like it's 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 man. First, we need to contextualize man. the first two contracts. BTS is Imagine you can't re-record your own music that you made. The fuck? Started as a hip hop idol group in the K-pop industry, and in this industry, most contracts last seven years. This is, of course, if the group is successful. Because mm -hmm. if it isn't, or if there's any conflict. The contract ends earlier. Oh. However, even in the best case scenarios, Damn. successful groups will disband in their seventh year. This is why the K pop seven year curse exists. This is what RM said in BTS's eighth anniversary in 2021. Seven years, it symbolizes like an invisible limit for many Korean teams, especially the, the K pop groups. The eight year anniversary is kind of like a really, like a momentum and it's like a meaningful day for, for a group. So Woo. the groups that sign with their labels for a second time are rare, but they do exist. However, I think it's important to make a very important distinction between BTS and other K-pop groups. To start, many of the K-pop groups that decide to continue being a group beyond Ooh. the end of their contracts tend to sign with different labels individually, but they come together as a group from time to time, or at least that's what they promise. Because a common trend lately is having a silent disbandment. Ugh. Other groups that do stay together for years and years have so many members that it's inevitable for all of them to stay in the group. But I don't want to be unfair. Of okay. course, there okay, are okay. some K-pop groups that stay together for many years. The longest running K-pop group has been together with all of its members for more than 20 years. Jesus. And while I congratulate them and hope for a similar future for BTS Jesus. in terms of number of years, the reality is that BTS situation is different and way more complicated because there is no other group in the history of K-pop that has been able to truly pave their way in the global music industry. Bow. So as annoying as it can be to the BTS members, their decisions and future are of the industry's interest. Thousands of articles are made for every decision they make and their contract renewal, disbandment or any tiny decision by them will become international news reported and analyzed for days, weeks and even months. That's a lot of power, dude. That is a lot of power. And I'm glad that these guys seemingly are really good people. That they're really good people. You know, it's you, you, finally somebody a good good a good group of people have ho have have like pretty much one of or maybe the most power in fucking music. Even though that's that's a very that's a stretch and I know it's a stretch. The comments might be on my ass about that, but I'm glad that BTS is able to have this much power, okay? If this shit was in the wrong hands, imagine what the fuck would happen. This doesn't happen to K-pop Yes, they do deserve because it. Because as legendary as they can be to the K-pop sphere, their disbandment or renewal will have almost no effect in the global music industry or their country's economy. Mm. BTS being signed as a seven-member group to a Korean label means more tourism, Bow. more South Korean recognition internationally, and even more jobs for South Korean citizens. Woo! My point is that BTS signing not a second contract, but a third contract is extremely rare in the Korean music industry because no other Korean group has grown to the lens of BTS to even think about making a decision this year. That's so Beyond tough. that, groups that do become relevant in K-pop don't stay together for more than one contract. Sometimes because when they get what appears to be bigger solo opportunities, either from Korean labels or international labels, they take them. That's what I find extraordinary. BTS plan to stay together after their military service no matter what. 
Hype's founder recently said that the BTS members wanted one of their first projects after coming back to be a special project related to their album trilogy, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, whether it is with Hive or with any other label. And as you know, in 2015, BTS you know, released its um, Hi Young Yana or The Most Beautiful Moment in Life album and the album series. And this was a very important album series for them. We said to each other, you know, let's make, let's make sure we put out a 10 year anniversary album and a project. If they hadn't signed with us, they still would have released it, just not with us. They would have mm -hmm. done it with somebody else. This <laughs> special project was already kind of announced by Suga and RM in 2022. <laughs> 할수 있을 것 같지도 않을까 뭐 이런 생각을 했었잖아요. So whether the media wants to admit it or not, the biggest sign of this contract renewal came from the members themselves, because they are not going to promise things that are not going to happen. Bam. They know that each of their sentences can and will become global news. This is why they always negotiate and come to a conclusion years in anticipation. This prevents all high tensions and speculations by fans and the media about their future. Again, this is an extraordinary measure that BTS takes because of their position in the global music industry. Most groups that do sign a second contract do it a couple of months before their first seven-year contract ends. Others keep negotiating after their contracts already ended, leaving their fans and investors of the label basically in the dark about what will happen. Mm. Now, you may say that it's responsible for groups to take their time in negotiating these contracts. And I totally agree. But it's important to know that BTS always does what's beyond considered responsible. And that's another obvious sign the media try to dismiss. BTS doesn't wait until the end of their current contract to consider signing again. Instead, each of the seven members take decisions together by consulting their personal lawyers two years in advance. They carefully think about and plan their future together. And this is a unique measure only BTS takes because of their unique position. So I don't want to hear any more comments diminishing the importance and uniqueness uh, uh. of this contract, because other K-pop groups lasted for decades too. When the news broke, some articles focus on how rare this type of longevity is in K-pop. It's rare, it's defining, it's a new standard set Bam. by them, and they are right. When it comes to cable contracts, the chances of disbanding are infinitely higher than the chances of making the group their priority. But BTS showed from day one that they are the exception. Ladies and gentlemen, BTS. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Well, damn. All right, cool. <laughs> So that was in the context of K-pop contracts. But Western contracts are another world, and Western group contracts are even more complicated. The Them niggas be using words like perpetuity and shit like that. Mm. Global artists that have long-lasting music careers tend to be soloists because it's easier for one person to make what they consider the best decisions for themselves. But when a group is successful, they all have to take decisions together. And the chances of being able to do that for years and years is very low. Of course, there are legendary groups that have been together for decades. You said, what's up with Super Junior? Like, why does everyone hate them? I'm gonna be honest, I don't completely remember, but I know some bad things have happened. I, like I, I I just I just know that, that's that's about it. I bet some bad things have happened with some members. Uh, that's 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 pretty much it. Coldplay is the closest. My memory sucks, so yeah. Example to BTS, and by their friendship and the conversations they had during the days BTS started. Yeah, their talks it's just some stuff future, out there. I think that BTS <clears throat> is looking for this longevity. I don't think it's a coincidence that both groups <laughs> got closer to each other during this difficult time. So it's definitely possible for BTS to take a similar path. But I still want to highlight that BTS's third contract is not only rare in the K-pop industry. BTS is not only the biggest group in the world, but they are also the only group at the moment able to compete with soloists. Bam. BTS as a group are part of the world's top 10 artists. Bam. However, the second biggest group in the world and other popular groups cannot even enter the top 30. Mm. This is why this contract is even more impactful than you think. Historically, groups have not been able to succeed as much as soloists. Think about the groups that were able to actually compete with solo artists, from legendary bands like The Beatles to pop culture boy bands like NSYNC and One Direction. They only lasted for 
10, 7, and 5 years respectively. So as the one massively successful group at the moment, it's remarkable and extremely rare for BTS to enter their second decade. Because this never happens when your group is at the top of the world. So if this third contract is so rare, weren't the predictions of this man men by the media not that unreasonable? Like I said, I understand if this comes from people who don't know much about the industry, mm -hmm. but the ones who make these articles are supposed to be K-pop journalists. They should know that their military service was inevitable, but they also should know that at this point, they don't promise things just to calm fans. They've <clears throat> never done that, and these journalists ignore this fact purposefully, in my opinion. For every journalist and fan who has followed BTS's career closely, this contract renewal should not be a surprise. Why? Because they've promised it would happen knowing that their country is looking at them. Because BTS always negotiates two years in advance. Because they've never lied about a project coming out. Because they've spoiled in 2022 their plans for a project in 2025. And you're still surprised that they renew? You still ignore all of this and choose to predict their breakup? You are Clicks, delusional. they want clicks. Because they want no clicks. other group does this. It's not even delusion. They just want clicks. I swear. I swear they do. I swear they do. I swear. So there actually exists uncertainty with them, but not with BTS. And you know this. You're supposed to be an expert on this. You study K-pop. You study boy bands. You study BTS impact in the global music industry. So if you predicted the complete opposite of what just happened, maybe you should stop selecting only what you desperately wanted to see and start seeing the overall picture. Since the BTS members started enlisting, K-pop's growth has significantly decreased compared to when BTS was a seven-member group. Wow. So every media person wanting K-pop to succeed should have been wishing that BTS comes back, not the opposite. Because as easy as it was for Billboard and Western award shows to create K-pop categories, as easy it will be for them to take them away we've seen it happen and it can happen again so let's celebrate that bts is the exception yes let's celebrate that bts is entering their second decade in the history of music yes yes it, I, i'm so glad that i am in the same period of time that i am to see bts and i'm so glad that i found them when i did even though i was late as hell but this shit is this shit is amazing. That fifteen point seven million per member is crazy. That's a lot of zeros, dog. God damn, man. I mean, listen. <clears throat> I just hope we could just speed boost to twenty twenty five. That's all I can ask for. Twenty twenty four is about to be. I don't know. I I don't know, man. This is gonna be. Yeah. Let's just let's just wish for the best. Pretty much. That's all I can say. But this is another good video from Bora City. I'm glad we're back watching these Bora City videos because she never disappoints. Ever, actually. Mm. Even when she called me out. <laughs>